Welcome, and thank you for joining us as we celebrate 30 years of generations. I'm Beth Brotherton, a member of the board and the mother of three boys. We're coming to you today from the Generations Campus. Right now, there are 40 boys here receiving treatment. Generations opened in 1991 with the mission of stopping the cycle of sexual abuse. During these three decades, we have maintained a success rate of 98%, which means the boys who are cared for here do not reoffend. During the next half hour, you will hear from the founder of Generations, a former resident, a current resident, and the wife of a former resident who will talk to you about the husband and father that she lives with today because of his time at Generations. You will also hear from leaders at Generations who will tell you why your financial support is so critical to the mission of no more victims. Let's begin our program with Kathleen Reynolds, the founder and visionary who began Generations. I think I need to start out by saying I can't believe it's 30 years. It's amazing to me. Things have changed so dramatically in every walk of life. But the most important thing to me is that Generations hasn't changed. Our mission's the same, and that's to stop sexual abusive behavior. I have a very personal reason for starting Generations, and that was because my sister was a victim of date rape. And I saw the immediate aftermath of her condition and I saw her wounds heal, but what we didn't know back then in the 60s was that so much was done to her emotionally. And as my nursing career went forward and I started working with victims, I then saw the terrible impact that sexual abusive behavior had, the trauma that it had on these folks. I saw the self-loathing, I saw the shame, the guilt. So many of the victims of sexual abuse feel that they are at fault that they are the reason that they were hurt. It's something that overshadows their entire life. So what I did was when I worked with victims was try to learn as much as I could and I realized how badly we had failed my sister because we never talked about it. We never did anything about it. We just assumed she'd get better. And of course, that is not the case. With many victims, they get into self-destructive behaviors because of all those feelings that they have. And what I noted was that young boys kids of 10, 11, 12, were very angry at what happened to them, and they started acting out that anger on others. So I wanted to do something. I felt that I needed to honor my sister in some way. So I decided I couldn't predict who would become a victim, but if I knew about children who were acting out sexually, then could we intervene and stop that cycle? And that would be a way I would honor her. So in 1991, with the help of Nell Smith, a state senator, we opened Generations. It was a model program. People hadn't done this before. Everything that had been done was connected to the criminal justice system. So we learned a lot from the kids in the first couple of years, and we worked really hard to help them understand why they did what they did and how to develop pro-social behaviors so they could stop those kind of behaviors that hurt people and begin behaviors that would make them productive citizens. And what we found was that only 2% of our children returned back into the system. Now take that 2% and compare it to the juvenile justice system where 50 to 80% of their children go back into the system in the first two years. So we were amazed, we knew it worked, we knew it could be very successful, and we were very proud of that. So I figured, let me go on, and we increased campuses. We had one campus with 12 children, then we opened another house, then the Department of Juvenile Justice said, wow, your kids are not coming back into the system and ours are. Could we open, could generations open a campus for those children? So we opened the Bridges campus that held 26 kids. So we bumped along beautifully and I was so thrilled at what had happened and how well we did. The staff are so important to us and have done so much to make our program successful. When you're at Generations, you really do feel like you're part of a family. We look at the deepest, darkest, saddest moments in their lives and help them work through that pain so that they can understand that they're not a bad person. What happened to them was terrible and what they did was terrible, but they could come out the other side and truly 
be a productive citizen. I feel the work that we're doing at Generations Now is as significant as it was back then. The children are doing well, the outcomes are the same, so I think Generations is in good hands. So I want to tell you that I really hope that you can look at Generations and come visit us and see us and donate to us because we are something that works. We are a proven solution and we'd really love you to help us continue that program. You help us give them the childhood they didn't have. The Christmases, the birthdays, the Easter egg hunts, how they can actually relive their childhood. And then after that, they leave us and go back to the community where they raise families that are healthy, they pay taxes, and more importantly, they do not become back to the criminal justice system, or more importantly, they don't hurt anyone else after they leave us because they have had the cycle of sexual abuse broken. My name is Michaela Horvath, and I am currently serving as the Interim Executive Director here at Generations Group. I want to start out by thanking Kathleen for her vision and for starting Generations when she did. This is a much needed service across the state, and we are so grateful that Kathleen was able to start this organization back in 1991. Today, we are having this virtual fundraiser in hopes of raising money because we need to continue to serve the boys throughout the state to help end the cycle of sexual abuse. I started here at Generations back in 2017. I started as a therapist on the Pathways campus, and over the years, I've had the privilege of serving in several different roles within the organization, currently as the interim executive director, so I get to see a different side of things now. But I continue to see the success um, of these boys and the work that we do that is so needed. And I have the privilege of seeing this every day. Now I would like to introduce you to James. He's a former resident of Generations, one of the first residents that we serve. He's currently living in New York. He lives a successful and productive life, and he is so thankful for everything that Generations was able to do for him. Hi, my name is James. Um, I'm uh, currently 43, almost 44. Uh, I would like to state I'm one of the original uh, generation's uh, first years. Um, I would say I was, my number was 13. Um, I was there for about three, four years. I went through all the treatment, the schooling, and dealt with a lot of the um, therapy, things like that. But I can tell you that uh, Generations has been a big influence on like how I live my life now in the sense that I'm honest with people, with myself, and that affects on how my interactions are at work or have been at for a lot of jobs. I would say um, Kathleen Turner, Jean Patan, and Ed Parler were big help in helping me figure out who and where I want to be and have me question that throughout my life, but also giving me tools to, like uh, Gene stating, there's no try, only do, uh, kind of a famous Star Wars quote, but one that does hold true. Um, Ed telling me to kind of be myself, don't let others dictate who I am, or things like that, and uh, Kathleen just basically stating, be honest, uh, be truthful, especially with myself um, and they've all kind of imparted a lot of that into me. My friends see me as honest, see as somebody that they can confide in, they can trust and I would say a lot of that is due to um, how Generations has molded me into being a better person, um, wanting for me myself to be a better person, um, not just for me or the people or my mistakes in the past, but show that I can be somebody and that I am worth it. Um, and I guess you can say I think about uh, my time back then a lot of times. And when I have troubles or anything like that, I do think about uh, how they helped me and how they would think of how I should go forward with things. I also use that to help other friends on uh, the therapy that they gave me, the advice they've given me to help my friends through their tough trying times. So 
it's not that I'm just helping myself or focusing on myself. I also focus on others. So um, people actually tell me I have a very big heart and I kind of uh, owe that old, all two generations group home. Thank you, James, for that inspiring story. Hello, my name is Gerald Hunt, a Generations Board member and a retired Greenville Police Department captain. I'm a donor, and you should become one too, so that Generations can champion more young men like James. As a law enforcement officer, I saw how the cycle of abuse contributed to the cycle of criminalization. At Generations, they have a program that helped young men to flow their way through life so that they won't be involved in criminal activity. It is my pleasure now to introduce you to Jenna to talk to us about her husband, who is a past resident. Mark is my husband. We first met in middle school, but we um, got to know each other more in high school. Mark was more of a laid back person and he was didn't have very many friends and I don't know I just kind of felt like he needed a friend when I first saw him he didn't really seem to have many feelings and he didn't express them if he did he did have a bit of an anger problem especially when I met him in middle school that was the only emotion he really showed was anger and he had learned how to work through that when I found out more about his past, I had found out he had also been abused as a young child. I believe his abuse led to his anger and not trusting anybody. He just has overcome a lot and Generations has helped him a lot to understand how to overcome those things. I learned about Mark's offense after we had been dating um, almost a year. And his um, stepmom actually just came, brought me to her room and told me. I wasn't angry or anything. I just kind of felt like there was more to the story and um, than I was being told. It was more of a process to tell me exactly what happened and coming out little by little. I can also see how he has changed and how it made him a better person to get go through what he went through, actually. I think Generations did a good job with preparing him to be a good father and teaching him how to just deal with life, really. Even though hardship comes and you have run into obstacles, just work past them. Me and Mark have been married six years this year. We have four children and we also take care of our sister. Mark is actually a really good parent. He's a really good dad. He doesn't want to fail them and he wants to do his best on everything he does for them. He tries to be as patient as possible with him, which is hard with little kids. <laughs> when we took his sister in, when um, both of her parents passed away, and he just took her in like it was no thought about it. It was just like a new daughter, but a teenage daughter. <laughs> he just took her in and he treats her like she's just one of our kids. And he takes care of her and like if she needs somebody, she usually comes to me because girls do that with their moms <laughs> figures. But um, she knows she can also go to him. If it hadn't been for generations, I honestly don't know where he would be. I don't know how he would have dealt with his anger. And I don't know if he would have been the man I know today or the father that I know or the husband that I know. Thank you, Jenna. Good afternoon. My name is Megan Reardon, and I am chair of the board at Generations Group. I am thankful to each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to attend our virtual event. You know, Generations has a tough mission. We work with at-risk boys to help them overcome their sexually abusive behaviors so that we can end the cycle of sexual abuse. It's tough work on a tough subject but it's work that resonates with me personally. When I was in my early 20s, I was in a relationship with a man who engaged in his own inappropriate abusive behaviors. And I was on the receiving end of a lot of that. 
And over time, I came to learn that my boyfriend had been molested as a child, as a three-year-old. And after that, he, he molested other kids and he engaged in abusive behaviors with his partners, myself included. Fortunately, with the help of my friends and family, I was able to pull out of that, to no longer be in that relationship. And I'm happy to say that I am married to a wonderful man and we have a beautiful daughter. But I think about this person from time to time. And so when I learned about Generations, I thought, you know, I couldn't help my ex-boyfriend. But maybe I can help this group of boys from becoming him. And so I give my time to Generations. I give my money to Generations. Because over the last 30 years, Generations has helped over 1,000 families and their children overcome these abusive behaviors. It's tough work on a tough subject. And we need donations to make this work happen and continue. So if my story hasn't convinced you, I want you to listen to DJ. He's a current resident in Generations, and he's going to talk to you about his struggles in his life and the tools he is learning at Generations that are going to help him become a good man. My name is DJ and I've been at Generations for 10 months. My real dad always used to beat on my mama. And it just hurt in my heart. I remember my real dad kicking me and my mom out the house, making us sleep on the front porch sometimes just for another woman. I just had these things going on. I was mad and sad. In my mind, it was like, it was heartbreaking. It's like, you wouldn't expect someone to have a child with someone just so they can beat on them. Even when I got locked up, came to Generations, my real dad hasn't asked about me not one time. Everything that was going on, me being frustrated, being addicted to pornography and drugs, it got me in that mindset like, man, I don't care, like, I might as well try to meet my needs in a sexual way. After what I did, I was getting feedback saying, like, you're a monster. I understand that, but at the same time, most people don't know why I did it, how I did it, what got me into doing this. I was having all these problems. And like, many times, sometimes I was angry and upset um, because of some things that I didn't like. It was some things I couldn't control. Because at the time I was 12, and it's something that a 12 year old can't do and can't handle. Being in jail, it's like everybody knowing my offense. People wanting to fight me, people calling me gay and stuff. Sometimes I cried myself to sleep at night. I know what I did was wrong. How, what, how I was thinking negatively. But since I got here, it taught me how to change my negative behaviors, change my way of thinking to be a better person, have a better mindset, to be a positive leader, to show integrity, to show the people that look up to me what to do and know what not to do. I can't let the past affect the present and the future because I can't control anything that's in the past. I can just control what's right now. We're learning how to change our negative behavior. We're here to learn how to prevent ourselves from hurting the victim that we did and from hurting others. And the plan is when I leave here, I want to be a better person. That's for everybody watching. Once you leave here, just do the right thing. Hurt people hurt people, leaving them in scars colored purple. And negativity breeds negativity. Everyone knows misery loves company. And a bully is nothing but an angry, broken heart shattered by internal agony. My dear bully, your vibe reeks with displaced anger. You're not mad at me, but your pain is creating cloudy skies, rainy days, and stormy weather. You talk and act like a hater. Remember, karma will make you regret the pain you cause later. 
Love yourself, respect yourself, don't embarrass yourself and be a hater. But a bully has no integrity, just heavy punches and shallow punch lines, spreading rumors and lies, but the truth will always shine. It's just a matter of time, I'm resilient, I'll be fine. But you treat me as if I am less than a human, just so you can feel less invisible. That's selfish and inhuman. But my dear bully, I am no longer your punching bag. Your words cut deep, but here I stand with grace in my right hand and loyalty in my left hand. But you burn my spirits, roasting me with the same words that you had heard before. Because hurt people hurt people, leaving them in scars colored purple. And negativity breeds negativity. Everyone knows misery loves company. And a bully is nothing but an angry broken heart shattered by internal agony. Thank you, DJ, for your openness and honesty in talking about your offense, your hurts, and now your healing here at Generations. I'm going to close us out today by asking for your donations and reminding you that every dollar you give goes to the care and the feeding of the boys here at Generations. Their food, their clothing, their school supplies all depend on you. Kids like DJ, who are away from home, away from their families, seeking treatment here, and they need to feel like they're in a place where they're loved and taken care of and can have the childhood that in many cases they missed. Your dollars can also fund things like outings, parties, activities, even Boy Scouts as rewards and incentives for good behavior. An annual gift of $500 will support a full year of celebrations for one of the boys, purchasing birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, and other items that would support them in making them feel like they're cared for and they have a place to belong. A gift of $1,000 helps the boys who graduate from Generations transition out of this program and redevelop relationships with their family members. A generation staff member works with the boys and their family in therapeutic settings to make sure that they are able to restore their family unit. A gift of $3,500 would support the daily needs of a boy for an entire year, providing them their food, their clothing, recreation, activities, school supplies, and the opportunity to continue their education. There are over 80,000 cases of sexual abuse reported in our nation each year, and there are many more cases that go unreported. Sexual abuse is a cycle of terror, impacting one in six boys in our country under the age of 18. Right now, there are 40 boys receiving treatment here on the Generations campus. Generations opened in 1991 with a mission of stopping the cycle of sexual abuse. During these three decades, we have maintained a success rate of 98%, meaning the vast majority of the boys who come to Generations do not reoffend. Generations is the only group home of its kind here in the state. We treat boys across South Carolina, and we cannot do it without your help. Give. Donate right now during this program by clicking the Give button or by writing a check and putting it in the mail today to the address on your screen. We need you. The boys here need you. Thank you for your generosity. You help us give them the childhood they didn't have. And then after that, they leave us and go back to the community where they raise families that are healthy, they pay taxes, and more importantly, they don't hurt anyone else because they have had the cycle of sexual abuse broken. If it hadn't been for generations, I honestly don't know where he would be, and I don't know if he would have been the man I know today, or the father that I know, or the husband that I know. We're here to learn how to prevent ourselves from hurting the victim that we did and from hurting others. And the plan is when I leave here, I want to be a better person.